we've returned! Yay! Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, June the 19th, 2023, and this is vlog number 317. And we're back. Yes, we're back from our two weeks down to the east coast of Canada. We had a great time. Weather wasn't so nice. It was a little bit on the cool side, and uh, most days we had rain as well. Seems like that's the trend for us when we go on holidays this year, you know, because when we went out to the west coast, it was very much similar. But uh, I can say that today is very nice here, and yeah, it's good to be home. So that takes me to my current projects. Well, I don't have any. But I will very soon because I came back with quite the haul of fabric and kits and notions and everything like that, like about $1,500 worth. So I really went shopping at the quilt show and at, uh, you know, in various spots of the various provinces we visited. So I am going to be showing all of that in more detail uh, tomorrow on the Idiot Quilter episode. So Tune in tomorrow if you'd like to see what $1,500 buys you. Uh, so as far as projects are concerned, I don't have any on the go at the moment, but I'm hoping to rectify that later today. Uh, when I'm on trips, I get a little antsy when I'm away from home for a while. So I pull out my phone and in my notepad and I start uh, making lists of things I want to do when I get home. Now, <laughs> these are kind of pie in the sky lists because I don't usually get everything done. And as the trip goes on, I keep adding to it and adding to it. And uh, the list gets a little overwhelming. So when I come home, I usually get started on it, but I never get it finished because, you know, life happens or, you know, squirrel kind of a thing. But anyways, yes, I have some projects I want to get started with, uh, some big ones, some small ones. And yeah stay tuned okay so that takes me to the youtube channel of the week and this is called dan's tutorials this week's youtube channel of the week is called dan's tutorials and if you want to find out how to get the most out of any of your uh mac products your apple products then this is the site to go to i find that his explanations are very clear very simple very step by step so if we take a look at this, we can see that in his, um, let's take a look at his playlists. And he has Mac OS, uh, Sonoma favorite uh, features. This one is the most current uh, iOS version of um, the operating system for your Mac. Uh, he talks about freeform app videos, YouTube shorts he's got. Um, iCloud videos, Mac, iPad, and iPhone videos, and then he's got some of the other operating systems that are in some of his older playlists. Basically, he has all kinds of things, and he has troubleshooting videos as well. I really like his explanations. As I said before, they're very clear, they're very easy to follow, and I find very helpful. So if you're struggling with your uh, Apple product, this might in be this the video spot to go to. So you will find Dan's tutorials in the uh, show notes below with the link for it. You're also going to find a link, as you always do, for So With Stephanie and Stephen, Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. All are welcome. And you will find a link for a pop-up so day. So let me tell you a little bit about the link for the pop-up so day. Uh, it is there. It's this Saturday, June the 24th starting at 8 a.m. and running till approximately 5 p.m. in the afternoon. You can come and go as you please. You don't have to be right there at 8 o'clock, blah, blah, blah. You've heard me say all this before. And all are welcome. And just a reminder, you do not have to be a quilter to be part of that pop-up so day. You could be a crafter, a knitter, a crochet, or whatever. And all are welcome. It's just a time for you to, you know, do something you want to do and uh, work with other like-minded people. So as I said, the link is in the show notes below. And for those of you on my mailing list, I'll be sending that out to you later today as well. So that's this Saturday, June the 24th, 
8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Walter will not be joining us, unfortunately, for those of you that are part of Walter's fan club. He is off to his own in-person sew day at the club with uh, his sewing class. Now, normally I would be going to that as well, but there was a mix-up on dates. Uh, they originally scheduled it for the 24th, so at that point I thought, well, I won't be able to have a pop-up sew day. Then they've put it on to the 17th. Well, the 17th was this past Saturday, and we were on the road coming home on Saturday. So I decided when I found out it was on the 17th that I'd let everybody know I was having pop-up so day on the 24th. Well, guess what? They switched it back to the 24th. Uh, but that doesn't matter. I already said I was going to have a pop-up so day, and I am. And to be honest, just between you and I, um, I don't really enjoy those pop-up so days uh, at the club. I lug all my stuff there. I'm the only one that's a quilter. The rest are doing garments. There's only maybe four of us, counting the instructor. And although it's nice to get out and that kind of thing, I would rather be with my peeps. I'd rather be with all of you uh, here on a pop-up so day. So that's what I'm going to do. And I don't know, maybe down the road I will go again, or maybe I won't. Maybe if they ha they usually have those once a month, maybe that's a good time for me to also have the pop-up so days. So, yeah, unfortunately, Walter will not be here. Well, he never joins in until later on anyway, so does it really matter? Whatever. Okay, you will also find a playlist linked in the show notes for all the videos that I made while we were out on the East Coast. So if you missed any of them, they'll be there. Or if you didn't see any of them and you're interested, they're there. Up to you. Okay. And uh, there is a link for the latest Stephen and Walter Live that we did on Sunday afternoon. Um, that one we kind of talked about um, the trip again, did sort of a post-mortem on it. Uh, looked at what people were saying. They, we had lots of questions and comments uh, to the videos I made while we were in the East Coast. So I responded to many of those, the ones that were a little bit more interesting or needed a little more detailed explanation, um, which it's easier to do if you do it orally than doing it by typing it all in. Um, so that's what we've been doing. That's what we'll probably be doing um um, both so chatty and on Stephen and Walter live as well. It's just a little easier. And then I can handle, you know, multiple questions because a lot of times you get the same question. So I can handle them all at once by doing that. Um, I mentioned the pop, the um, emailing list that I have for pop up. So day, I also have one for craft and chat. Uh, it seems like forever since we've had a craft and chat. But we will be having one on the first Wednesday of July. We missed this past month because I was away. Uh, I am thinking, though, because I have those two mailing lists, uh, if there's an easy way for me to combine them into one master mailing list, I might try that. Um, because I know some of you are on both lists, and so you're getting duplicates sometimes. Because I send out the pop-up uh, so day notice to both those lists. So it's kind of redundant. So I'm, I'll am i see about that. I have to see if it's easy to merge the two in my email client or not. I'm not typing them all back in, I can tell you that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but for now, watch for that uh, notice coming out later today. Um, okay, let's take a look at uh, looking out my window this morning. And this is what we see. Lovely. Uh, it is 7 o'clock a.m. here, Eastern Standard Time. And um, yeah, sky is clear. I don't think there's any rain in the forecast. Uh, last I looked, there isn't any rain in the forecast until uh, this coming Sunday a little bit. So it looks like it's going to, temperatures look like they're going to be, you know, in about the low 20s, which is very comfortable. And uh, you can see we've got some flowers out there. Walter's. Uh, bought some flowers yesterday he came home he says i bought dead flowers um there were some flowers at canadian tire that mm, looked a little worse for the wear and they were like 30 percent off or something and he used his points on his points card for canadian tire and he got them for nothing basically between that all of that so he brought them home and they'll perk up in fact they're looking pretty perky right now walter has a green thumb what he touches grows 
fly, on the other hand, unless it's a philodendron and I touch it, it dies. So, yeah. But anyways, that's what it's looking like today. I think it's going to be a really nice day. And maybe I could do some sewing outside if I get around to it today. I have other things to do. Okay, so that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. Well, this is kind of disturbing, I find. Uh, when I was down in the East Coast, uh, Atlantic provinces tend to be uh, more economically challenged, for lack of a better word, than, say, some of the other provinces, especially for Ontario and Quebec. Um, Ontario is basically the financial capital of Canada because of Toronto, um, the largest city in Canada, and where I live, the GTA or the Golden Horseshoe. Um, this is where the vast majority of the population of Canada resides. And by the way, we just went up to 40 million. Um, that's still small, but we are the second la largest land mass in the world. Russia beats us out uh, there. But as far as population is concerned, well, we're concentrated in around the Great Lakes area of Canada. And um, that, though, makes things, you know, a lot of money into the economy there. And I dare say that probably the Canadian government gets its the majority of its money, at least the tax money, from our area. Meanwhile, down the East Coast, not such, not the same. And it was very apparent where we went. Well, first of all, the population of the East Coast is, you know, I'm not sure what their largest city might be in the East Coast. It's probably Halifax. And I'm not absolutely sure what the population of Halifax is, but I think it might be in around about 500,000. That's not huge. Okay. Um, so less money. I'm not sure what the industry is. Yeah, there might be logging uh, in the East Coast because there's lots of trees if they're not being burned down by the fires, which, as a side note, we were not affected by the fires in Halifax. In fact, just before we got there, they pretty much got the one major one that was burning near Halifax under control. They got some rain before we went, and that was a good thing. Um, however, things are closed up. You could see it. Uh, many storefronts in some of the places we went to were boarded up, empty. Um, St. John is most of the tourist sites you'd go for, and there's not that many there, were either under construction or reconstruction, boarded up, closed, whatever. Now, I was told yesterday that probably we went the wrong time of the year, that really the tourist industry, which is probably one of the major industries for the Atlantic provinces, uh, is really not until July and August. And so, yeah, we were ahead of the game. And that was apparent when we were in Charlottetown because they have a summer start of their theater season and it didn't start till July. So actually it started about a week after we left. Um, so, yeah, and that probably draws a lot of people. And when it draws a lot of people into a province, it draws in money, commerce, right? But what's really sad is you could definitely see, and I don't want to use the word poverty, okay? Because that has a, a different connotation, more depressed, economically speaking. You could see that in the East Coast. And what's really pissing me off is this. The Canadian government is sending millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to the Ukraine. Now, yes, we're doing our part as a member of NATO. Apparently, we're not putting in enough money into NATO. They want more um, for that. And yes, we need to help the Ukrainians. I have nothing against that whatsoever. But you know, my father always said charity starts at home. You look after your own first. Well, the Atlantic provinces are ours. They're our people. And to a certain degree, they are suffering. And yet, from what I can see, our Canadian government doesn't care about them. They care more about a war halfway around the other side of the world with people who are not our citizens. Again, yes, we need to help. But we have people suffering in our own country. And that was very apparent to me when we went to the East Coast. But it's all across this country. It's right here in Ontario as well. 
the government needs to really put much more money into the infrastructure of our cities and our towns, into our hospital system. And I know some of these things are controlled by the provincial governments. And there's this ongoing battle between the provincial governments and the federal government about more money, more money, more money. But it is the responsibility of the federal government to look after this country, and they are not doing a very good job. We pay a lot of taxes in this country. I mean, everything is taxed. Now, I'm not just talking about income tax. We pay sales tax or HST. We there I discovered that there's a lovely little tax in most municipalities on accommodation, on motels and things. You're paying that. There's tax on food. There's tax on everything, on services here. That's a lot of money that we as individual citizens of this country put into it. And that money is not being spent wisely. I think, and this might be very controversial, I think we need to pull back from how much money we give in aid to other countries in the world and start concentrating on our own people and giving them the money. And I noticed right now that you were seeing me in the little screen and not up front. Sorry about that. Or maybe I'm not. Anyways, our government needs to do something about that. We cannot have people in this country living in poverty or just you know living from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, sure. Some of those problems come from personal decisions that are made by people. I get that. But these cities and these towns, and when you see them and you see things that are boarded up, and yes, COVID contributed to a lot of this, but how long are we going to come, come keep blaming COVID? The government loves to do it on a regular basis. Well, yeah, because of COVID. You know, it's going to take some time to recover because of the world economic situation. We have to change interest rates. Yeah, yeah, it's all a bunch of malarkey. Redirect the funds to where it's needed the most in our country. And when we have our own country running smoothly, economically, then we can reach out and help other countries. Because if our people are suffering, if you, you can't get blood from a stone, if there isn't any more money to wring out of the citizens of this country, then how can we be of any help to any other country in the world? Really? I don't know what goes through politicians' heads. Well, I know what it is. It has nothing to do with us as people. It has everything to do, and you've heard me say this many times before, it has everything to do with them and their lifestyle, how they want to keep themselves in power and in the money. Yeah, it's sad. And it's not a new problem. It's been happening for centuries all across the world. Don't know how we break out of that if we ever can. We as a world are broken on so many levels. Okay, that was depressing, wasn't it? So let's move on to something else. Let's talk about um, new products. Well, let me just find it here, what I want to show you. Now, I bought this while we were away. We went into a Best Buy because uh, Walter inadvertently left uh, one of his uh, charging blocks in a hotel room. They did find it, but by then, that was in, was that in Halifax where he left that, I think? Um, yeah. So um, he called them up when we were in Charlottetown. I think we were in Charlottetown at that point. And asked them if they found it. They did. So he has to sell, send them a self-addressed envelope. And they'll send it back to us. So in the meantime, we went into a Best Buy and he bought another one to replace it. Because it was kind of essential <laughs> for us on the trip. And while I was there, I saw this little stand. They called it a tablet smartphone stand. It was like it says here, it was 20 bucks. And it's really great. Um... I want it, I have something similar to this, a little bigger that holds my iPad off to the side over here. Um, but I wanted something to hold my cell phone uh, as well, especially when I'm doing some other videos and stuff like that. So I figured for, actually, I did, it didn't cost me 20 bucks. It was about uh, 11 bucks in the store, I think. 
No, it wouldn't be that much different. It's exactly the same one here. It must have been what it says here. On I can't see it being less. I don't know why I'm thinking 11 bucks. Must have been something else I was looking at. But anyways, it works really well. And it's very compact, folds right up. And uh, that's great too, because I like to travel with my tablet and my cell phone holders. And uh, if they fold up and they fit into a little special case I showed you a few weeks ago that I used, and by the way, that case that I got for the iPad for carrying in that with extra storage worked dandy. That was a good investment. That came from Amazon. So anyways, this is good. It's made of metal, except for that little piece of support at the back. That is plastic, but it's a very strong plastic. And uh, for the money, I don't think you can go wrong. So if you're looking for a new iPad or iPhone um, holder, um, this might be the one for you. As I said, it's uh, I bought it at Best Buy, so you can just do a search for it. Uh, call it uh, the Insignia Adjustable Tablet, but I'm sure you can find something equivalent to it. It's not exclusive to Best Buy, I don't think. Something else, probably find it on Amazon. I didn't look there for it. Okay, so that takes me to the grow lights <laughs> or the grow light jungle. I should call it because, yeah, um, things did well, too well, when we were gone. So let me just call this up for you and show you what we're dealing with here. Uh, there we go. So there's grow light number one. Yeah. Uh, can you say we've got a lot of basil and a lot of lettuce coming up there? But not only that, but you see in the back. There's a tomato plant. It's up touching the lights. So Walter is going to, uh, I think he's going to try and transplant it into a big pot and put it outside. We'll see how that does. He did have one that uh, was kind of sickly that we had in the other room in the jungle. Um, before we left, he put it in a pot and put it out, filled it all up with water. And there must have been some rain. Well, there was some rain here. It's doing well. It's thriving out there. So. And we've got to get our uh, the rest of our garden up uh, this week as well. Lots of things to do when you come home from a trip after two weeks. Now, you can see this little jungle. Uh, yep, lettuce is going nuts here. There is some spinach. It's much smaller. It's way back in the back there. Um, not sure how it's going to do, but there is spinach there. And these are our onions. And you can see we've got a little bit of dead growth in there. We need to prune those out um yeah they're green onions and they've just gone snaky wild and then okay this jungle okay we've got peppers coming out of our yin yang you can see them in the back we have red peppers we have orange peppers we have yellow peppers we have green peppers and we have tomatoes as well now there's one plant in here that's getting kind of ratty looking again that's where Walter thinks he may set outside transplant it and see how it does uh as well but yeah it things need to be cultivated back here because it's just gone wild but you know loving the grow lights uh they've been working out very well lots of lettuce i haven't bought a head of lettuce in a while um because we just eat our own and now with the peppers coming on here there you can see a couple of the green peppers right here as well um, so other ones are peeking in behind. So this is working really well. And we'll put more pepper plants and tomato plants and some other things out in the deck garden, the container garden, as I call it. Um, so we'll have a nice harvest, I hope. Unless the squirrels eat all the tomatoes again, those nasty little things. And speaking of squirrels, so we were uh, sitting under the deck, our patio area, which is enclosed, you know. Um, but the little creatures, 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 like the chipmunks, they like to go in there every now and then. And, you know, it's kind of sheltered in there and, you know, look around, sit there, look really cute like chipmunks do, the little destructive buggers. And uh, I noticed, though, that there were some sunflower seed casings on the ground under the patio. We don't have any sunflowers. But the neighbors do. Well, not sunflowers. They have sunflower seeds in their bird feeder and the squirrels and the chipmunks love to uh you know eat any of that stuff uh that the birds have kicked out onto the ground so i think chippy probably brought a few of those things over and decided to have a little private din dins 
under our deck. I said to Walter, maybe I should take one of my cameras and put it out there. You know, that might be interesting. Got to do that today uh, to see what goes on when we're not home or around there. I think the little devils have a party. So, yep, everything's growing and growing well. Okay, so that takes me to the 3D corner today. And yeah, uh, I've got two of them making some of my infamous um, scrap cans, the giant thimbles, which are, I was making them before we went to the East Coast. And at my meet and greet, I gave everybody there, like a lot of those out. And they seem to be very pleased with those. And that was great. I have a couple more here that are going to be, I have to mail uh, to people. Um, so I'm doing that, making those now. They take 63 hours a piece to print. So two out of my three printers are working nicely. Another one, the one that I just installed the new um, direct drive extruder to, is giving me a problem. It will print about mm, three quarters of an inch. And then for some reason, it's not laying down filament correctly, but then after it gets past that point, it starts to do it again. So I have a weak spot. And basically you can pull whatever you're creating at that point apart. That's not good. So I've had that problem before. Um, I've tried re-leveling it. That doesn't seem to make a difference. So what I'm going to try later today after I finish this vlog is um, seeing if there's something sticking. I need to clean up one of the axes on it and lubricate a little bit and see if that helps um i'm just not sure what it's doing why it's doing that so i will figure it out i will figure it out eventually so yeah so nothing really to show you because there's the printers have had a rest for two weeks but i'm home now they're not getting a rest okay so that takes me from blasts from the past trips and this is the second part of the taronga zoo in sydney uh, from December the 26th, 2016. This is part two of that video. Our red kangaroos. They're really quite big. Are they for the cougar bird? Yeah, I think so. So now we're in the lemur forest here, up front and personal with the lemurs. You're not supposed to crouch down. Mm -hmm. 
And there's these crazy looking little birds. Whatever they are. Polly, you want a cracker? Look like really ugly turkeys. Turkeys are ugly already. Giraffes. This is the African part of the zoo. So those two one are out in New Zealand to live and all the way to Antarctic. Yeah. And that's small one but this there. Yeah, he's the one who make a lot of noise. Why should I eat one? They're not finished yet. 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 This is out looking across from the zoo, across over to downtown Sydney, and all the boats in the harbor. I don't know if this has anything to do with the regatta today, or they're just anchored here. Probably just anchored here. Yeah, well, the regatta probably left already. Yeah. Oh yeah, probably. Just pleasure boaters. Oh, the aquarium's here. That's over here. That's over here. Where is he? Oh, he's on the other side. Here they are. Putting on their own over so. Cute. Says, lunch. I want lunch. What a size of it. <laughs> 
So that was our day at the zoo. We're on the ferry now back to uh, downtown Sydney. And we're going to go back to our hotel room, freshen up, and then maybe go a little later and look for some place to. So, as far as events in the past week, weren't the well, well, there were and there weren't, but we were out at the East Coast and uh, we came home, as I said, on Saturday, got home around three o'clock in the afternoon from that. Um, but I have taken all of, as I said, all of the videos that I created, I think there's 13, and I have put them into one playlist and that, and in the show notes, you will find that playlist if you're interested in seeing any of those, if you haven't already. Um, What's coming up then? Well, you already know about the So Day this coming Saturday, the 24th, starting at 8 a.m. Links in the show notes. Um, and I have a whole bunch of things I have to get straightened out here. Uh, when you come home with $1,500 worth of stuff, you got to find places to put it. One of the things on my little list of things to do is I have a couple of areas that I'm using to store art supplies and I really have not touched them like a lot of paints uh, bottles of paints that I bought large bottles um, that have never been opened and I've had them sitting there for well probably four years or so um, so I'm going to check all that stuff out see what's dried up what isn't dried up what's usable and there's an elementary school close to me and I thought I'd Call them up and see if they would like to have this stuff, um, you know, for their art uh, supplies. Um, I know schools always need stuff like that. And if they don't want it all or I decide that I want to split up the, the bunch of stuff, um, I know that uh, my local art gallery has a kids program in the summer and they're always looking for supplies so I can give it to them. And somebody suggested that uh, senior citizens, uh, community centers and things like that, they often need that kind of stuff too. So I think I can find lots of resources to basically get rid of this stuff because I'm not going to be using it. If I need paint, I can go out and buy more paint or something. And I maybe hold a few bottles back, but, you know, history says that I don't use it. So give it to somebody that will. That's going to free up some shelf space and some cupboard space where I can store one, my quilts, um, and two, fabric. Very important fabric. Okay, so that's my plan. I'll see. I've got to get to that. I have other things I need to do. I've got to get some more projects started. It just goes on and on. Whoever said retirement is boring? Not for me, it isn't always something to do plus and i'll be talking about this in more detail tomorrow and on so chatty i was gifted a featherweight sewing machine and it's beautiful it's in wonderful condition i have not sewn with it yet i just took it out of its case the other day this was gifted to me by my friend colleen out in pei charlottetown very very generous gift um, I just can't express how appreciative I would have been. It, it almost, thinking about it, it almost brings tears to my eyes with, with her generosity. And we talked more about Colleen and, and the other people who, we weren't expecting people to give us anything when we had the meet and greet or when we get out there. And, oh my God. And we talked about it yesterday on So Chatty. Or not on so chatty on Stephen Walter Live, and I'll talk about some of that stuff again tomorrow on the Idiot Quilter as well. But all I say can say is, the friends I have made, uh, doing my YouTube's and things like that, and it was great to meet some of these people face to face. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, the quilting community is a very giving community, and it's got probably the best people in the world as participants in it and yeah i don't want to gush here and i don't want to cry either because i'm just very thankful for all of them and all of you too for that matter okay so before i get real gushy here it's time to go so check idiot quilter out tomorrow when it goes up and there's going to be an interview up tomorrow as well that i did just before we went away 
So that comes up tomorrow. So chatty on Friday. Uh, we're going to be looking at the featherweight and figuring out how to oil it and get it up running smoothly. Um, and I don't think it's going to take that much work because it's in pretty decent shape for sure. And of course, Stephen and Walter live on Sunday at 4 p.m. Um, this coming Sunday. Oh, and I already mentioned pop-up soda. I, I'm repeating myself now. It's time to go. Have a great week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.